This illustration deals with chapter one, and we're still on the 100 series, but instead of being uh, article 100, as we previously reviewed for definitions, this is article 110 that deals with general requirements that are very important in the installation, uh, wiring methods, uh, and equipment by providing certain clearances in and around equipment. Now, notice this deals with condition one. Uh, and this condition one is to table uh, 110.26A as an Apple one of the NEC. And notice behind uh, that individual's back is a wall. And condition one means that wall is an insulated wall. If that wall was grounded into the earth in some manner, then it would be considered a grounded wall. If there was equipment opposite her back, in other words, equipment opposite equipment, then that would be condition three. But the uh, OSHA table S and OSHA 1910 subpart S has the same rule. And notice it's always you need at least three foot in a front of equipment to switch breakers and work with equipment that's totally enclosed. And you can see that in the illustration. Zero to 150 volts is three foot. And even if you had a grounded wall instead of an insulated wall, uh, your voltage 151 to 600 volts is three foot. And you know, that'd be like 277, 480 volt. Uh, maybe even a 480 volt corner ground. And then uh, anything over 601 up to 1,000 volts uh, is going to have a three-foot clearance. And notice that would be, you know, voltage usually from uh, PV systems, uh, maybe a wind generator, uh, electrical wind system, uh, also maybe from a fuel cell system, some of the, even from batteries, uh, packs, you know, or not packs necessarily, but a bank. Uh, we find in these clearances. But notice the clearances do increase, for example, if that was a grounded wall. Zero from 150 would be three foot. 151 to 600, though, would be uh, three and a half foot. And then I think you have four foot listed there for 601 to 1,000 foot uh, that you would have listed. So you can see, based upon that being a grounded wall, these uh, clearance rules change. And if it happened to be equipment opposite equipment, then the voltage would change again. So what chapter one is illustrating here in article 110, that 110.26A1, uh, A2, and A3 deals with the clearances uh, in and around equipment. Uh, table 110.26A1 deals with those clearances rules also with the condition of the voltage and where is condition one, two, or three. If you get into the higher voltages, then when that we say higher is over 1,000 volts, then 110.34A and table 110.34A along with 130.34F deals with the clearances in and around high voltage systems, it's over a thousand volts. But note in the OSHA standards, it's still less than 50, 50 to 600 and over 600 volts, which is my understanding when OSHA updates OSHA 1910 subpart S as well as some of the other standards, this voltage of over 600 volts may change to over a thousand volts and less than a thousand volts. So kind of keep that in mind and remember that chapter one, article 110, is giving the basic clearance rules, excuse me, in and around equipment.